Hi guys, welcome back. Scanlick here and we are off for more Banjo-Kazooie and in the last episode we began our grand adventure and in, well completed our tutorial world of Spiral Mountain, our home area, and entered Gruntilda's lair, grabbing our first jiggy and opening the way to begin rescuing Banjo's sister Tootie from the clutches of, well, Gruntilda the Witch. Because she wants to steal her beauty! Because apparently Banjo's sister is the most beautiful thing of all in the land. Which I would beg to differ, but that's just me. But that's the plot of the game, and we have Mumbo's Mountain, so we're just going to go straight in, because this is our first world of the game. And it's pretty simple for what you would expect. There are three new moves to learn in this world. Find my molehills, and I'll explain. So... Let's have a look in first person. Of course, since we're on the 360 version, we can uh, see, or the Xbox Arcade version, shall I say, we can actually see everything despite draw distance. If you're playing the N64 version, it only would be 4x3, but you'd be limited to draw distance. That includes the Switch Online version because it's, well, the N64 version. We've got little uh, gremlins around here, but yeah, you can pretty much see the entire world right here. You can see that there's a jiggy there, there's a jiggy there. We could probably slide down and grab that. Uh, we've got a honeycomb there, we've got a honeycomb in the totems up there. This is Mumbo's Mountain, and we know that Mumbo is a skelly bob from the game over screen. That looks like something up there. So, why don't we just get exploring? Now, we immediately started on a Banjo-Kazooie panel. Don't touch that, you will leave. If you're playing the N64 version, never die or leave the level unless you collect every note. I'm a note... One of a hundred on each world. Collect us to open the note doors. If you're playing the N64 version and you die or leave a level, you will have to collect them all again. They don't stay permanently collected. However, it, they will be recorded as a high score in your totals. In the Xbox Live Arcade version, they actually stay properly collected as you would expect them to. So please keep that in mind if you're playing the N64 version, you have a little bit of an extra challenge to not die. That is not a thing in the 360 version, which actually makes making videos a little bit easier, because if I need to take a break, I uh, don't have to leave my Xbox 360 on and then try to collect every note that I have before. Yippee! You saved me! Gruntilda has imprisoned five of us Jindos, Jin Jinjos, excuse me, on each world for us all to get a jiggy! I'm trying to press B to swim faster, that's to swim slower, and A doesn't do anything. That's because I'm getting mixed up with the original controls. That's probably going to happen for a bit, but let's try and grab these before we start drowning here. Do 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 do. I love the dynamic music that changes depending if you're in certain areas in a level, because the music just is so catchy in this game. Grand Cocope's a legend, man. Right, so we have a little segment. Oh, okay. Go away, leave my honeycombs alone. We're not going to go over that way right now. I've got a certain method that I want to do this level in, so I'm going to go up this way first. Remember that we can't get on rocky slopes. We will fall. I was supposed to... Oh, shoot. My controller died. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. I get smacked by a termite and my controller dies. That's very helpful. Let me kill you and get some of my health back. That was just unfortunate. Oh my god, this can't go any worse. Come back here, you stupid health. Mmm, I'm sticky, tasty, honey energy. Well, this is already up to a wacky start off the starting pad, isn't it? Okay, so <laughs> the problem with an X64 controller is that it can't tell you how low battery it is when it's one of those pa ones that, well... I believe all wireless 360 are the same. They take two double A's. But it can't tell you how much battery it's got, although the Wii can. Well, there's a jiggy right there, so I'm going to grab that. That'll make me feel better. You must search for ten of us on each world. We'll help you progress through the witch's lair. And we do the jig. Eat. Eat solid gold. Get jiggy! When you're ready to leave this world, return to the start area and start stand on the exit pad. Well, we got that, but I want to come over this way. Uh, can I zoom out the camera? Thank you. Give me that ikumbokum. Me Mambo's token, used for mumbo magic. Ikumbokum. That's a meme. 
All right, so we got some eggs. We'll go grab these. We're the eggs. Kazooie can learn to use us as ammo. Good to know. Speaking of learning, that's why, not B. God damn it. The Talon Trot will get Kazooie to tackle steep slopes with ease. That sounds useful. How does she do it? Hold the right trigger, then press the left trigger. Continue to hold the right or left trigger while moving Kazooie around with the left stick. Go practice. So basically double crouch. And then just hold one of them. Hold one of the triggers and you're good. Because remember, both of these buttons can both crouch. I believe in the original you would have to tap B while crouching with the Z trigger in order to do it. So they just made it both triggers and they just make it so much easier. In fact, out of curiosity... No, it's the A button. Eh? No, it's one of the C buttons, excuse me. Because B would, uh, with A would do that, and B, which is why, would do that for us. But yes, we have the Talon Trot, and that... I'm getting tongue-tied because there's so many things going on as well. Um, <laughs> because we're going to be blasting through this so quickly. There's another ginger right here. But yes, uh, the Talon Trot is the fastest mode of travel that we have at our disposal for the majority of the game. And yes, slopes can be tackled. So, for example, I'm standing here. If I let go, I'm going to slide. Now, here's the thing. There is a slight moment where Banjo will still be able to keep his footing before he actually starts slipping. So if I do this, for example, oh, whoops, go up a bit and then do that, I can stop myself from slipping. The thing is, though, Kazooie is very fast even if you're trying to ever so lightly walk. Her acceleration's a little bit more springy than Banjo's. So if you want precision movement, you want to be Banjo. If not, then just run around as Kazooie, because as you can see here, we're going to be blasting around here, grabbing all these notes, and we're going to be making our way down this spot. We bypassed it earlier, but we had to have the hand trot to get everything on the hills, so that's perfect. Yippee! You've collected enough notes to break the first note door spell. Yep, so we need to get enough notes in order to actually do that, because otherwise we would have to come back and grab them again. In the N64 version, as I said, if you leave or die, lose a life, uh, you would have to collect them all again and beat your previous score in order for them to actually start counting higher. Also, rendering distance may not be a thing in terms of visual, but in terms of AI working, he was just walking on the spot. So, a couple of blemishes here and there, but it's fine. Alright, so I think I've actually... Before I deal with that... Uh, I think I've got everything on those hills. Yep, I got everything on those heels at least, so that's cool. Let's go down here and deal with this. Arr, this conga's tree. Me hit bear with bright oranges. Arr. Look a much more subdued Arnold. We got orange switches, make him hit them with oranges. Don't touch conga's blocks. Arr. There we are. I'm taking a couple of hits, but it's fine. If you actually have any damage and you talk to Bowles to learn a move, he'll actually recover your health for you, but only on the t first time. That landed on me! I don't think that's supposed to happen! That's interesting, but, but when you grab that, he will still attack you. I actually missed a text box, so I was not expecting that. I'm gonna grab that quick. Hey, that conga's orange! Get it back! Yum. Orange is a nice. I actually skipped a bit of dialogue as well, because we've got Diddy Kong over here. Same sound effects and everything. Oh! Chimpy like Conga's orange! Chimpy help fat bear and bird! That's a rude. And that's another jiggy already! Two right next to each other. Pretty easy. This is the first world. They're going to be very close together. They're going to be a lot more uh, spaced apart and a lot more challenging after this level. This level is literally just a playground. Uh, well, playground with risk, basically as um, Spiral Mountain was basically without risk. Uh, we'll deal with that in a moment. For now, we'll just grab some more of these, because there is an Eagle Balkum here. And we also got... Oh. Uh, wait. Uh, oh, I don't have it yet. Yeah, I don't have it yet. We'll go come back for that. Oopsies. <laughs> but there's a switch there that we can't press right now. Kind of cocked up a little bit, but it's fine. Because I actually wanted to come down here and do it anyway, because we'll have to come back regardless, even if we do things in either order. I just thought I'd go grab that first. But then again, I got the tokens. That works out well. Time for the buzzer to learn the ancient ways of the egg. I'm listening, Beetle Breath. 
hold the right or left trigger, then press Y to shoot an egg out of your mouth. Hey, sounds cool. Anything else? Sure, press B instead and you'll shoot them out from behind. Sheesh, sounds painful. I wish I'd never asked. Bird Brain can carry a hundred eggs in her backpack. Oh, and you can also use the left stick to aim while you're crouching. Exciting, huh? Now that you've learned to use the eggs, here's 50 to practice with. Thank you, Bottles. Hmm, your energy is a little low. I'll fill it up for you. As I said before, uh, you learn a move for the first time. If you are a little bit low on health, get in there. You'll get a full refill, but it only works for that moment. That is the wrong button. <laughs> Me safe here, bear conquer conquer. That is the wrong button. Nope, it's B. I keep pressing Y. <laughs> this is the only thing that's going to be blind for me in terms of controls. That's literally the only difference in in terms of playability. That's a jump. That was a recovery, but I still got hit. Conga, good shot. No, it's X. X to fire forward. Yo, eggs hurt Conga. Well, wait, why did that not hit him? Back away so he doesn't fire at us. Shoot him again. Oh, oops. It's fine. We can get some health. There we go. It's very hard to aim the eggs. Truly. Bear be conga. Give gold. Banjo and Kazooie are not really impressed with me at the moment. <laughs> ah, that'll change though. Yeah, the, 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 their faces change when you start dropping below five units of health because that was your original starting position. Any higher and they will stay the same. And that's another thing that I need to talk about when it comes to health. If you make health appear, it will stay persistent. It will not disappear. So if you need health later on, you can pick it up later. There's a mumbo token over there and we want that. But for now, we're going to get back up this slope because... Actually, can you pack flip to reach that? Yeah, you can. So you can still get up here without it. Keep... Oh my god, I'm pressing B to try and talon trot. It's both triggers. <laughs> oh, the controls are going to be annoying. Okay! Uh, talon trot failed. That is a thing that can happen, but I don't remember it happening there. I can just jump in there, so it's perfectly fine. So, let's try again. Yeah, that is too steep. Okay. It might be because I'm on that seam. And the game doesn't know where to put me, so that may not work. But at the same time, it could just be naturally slippery, and I don't know. But what I was talking about, the health being persistent, if I were to, like, knock this guy out and just leave that health there, if I come back down, it will still be there, even in the N64 version. That is what will happen. So let's go grab some of these notes, grab the Mombo token. Uh, we can actually jump up here, so that's fine. Still bothers me that I'm trying to uh, attack and it's the Y button and not the um, uh, <laughs> the B button and where the A button where the B button would normally be on any other controller that I use I, I just got to remember that it's literally Xbox <laughs> let's grab these notes we're almost done with them actually we're three quarters of the way done almost f uh, four fifths Oh my god. Grab the jiggy! It's literally right there! <laughs> Speedrunner's worst nightmare. Talon trot, um, attack drift. <laughs> Jumping drift, excuse me. Not attacking drift. Right, so before we do anything else, let's come over this way. Uh, actually, no, I can. No, I will do that. I will do that. Let's go in here. Hey, ugly. No bears allowed in Teko's Tower. Uh, that's fine. I just want to grab this. Right, bye! <laughs> Here's the thing. Once again, uh, Town Trot can't beat every slope. We will slip if we're Banjo here. We will still slip, even as Kazooie there. So we can't exactly scale that tower to get up and grab that Jiggy on top. We're gonna have to find another way. For now, though, we have one more move to learn. I call this the Big Buster. Jump into the air, then press the right or left trigger to send Kazooie slamming hard down to the floor. Ooh. I don't like the sound of that, Banjo. Get used to it, Nest Girl. You'll be using it a lot. Yeah, just like Talon Trot. Which, by the way, she's picking up Kazooie's... F well, 
Kazooie is picking up like Banjo's full weight. Whoa, Banjo, there's nothing more I can teach you on this world. On this world, not in this world. It's almost like that these are like pocket dimensions. Kind of like in, ba in uh, Super Mario 64, where every painting its own little uh, world sort of thing. So we can ground pound these little huts and get a bunch of items out of them. Or we can use them as footing for this totem pole. We don't really need to, really, because what we can do is just stand in front of them. And, well, if I come over here, actually, they'll probably say what they want. We Juju, Mumbo's totem pole, feed us with nice blue stones. Because apparently, eggs are stones to them. But, hey, they're eggs, they'll eat them. So, that's the thing. And they're not Kazooies. There was an enemy in there. Ow. Did you get out of it? Oh god. You get, know what? BAP HIM! Nailed him. Do I actually need health? Not too sure. I'll grab one anyway, but I don't need both of them. Remember, as I said, if you do kill enemies, it is worth your while to take take care of enemies and just leave their health behind, because then they'll be a nu less of a nuisance and the health will stay. Grab all five Jinjos, you get a Jiggy. We are really making headway. There's an extra life, we'll grab that. Do 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 do! Smash! And another Jiggy! If only they could always be this easy to grab, waiting to Banjo Tooie. My god. Well, how, what, what a way to make a, a main collectible the most annoying thing to grab. No, it's X. I, I, I realised as soon as I pressed the button. So what we need to do is just shoot one into its gob, and it, it disappears. We send them flying away, and they shrink, just like you would see them in Crash Bandicoot. I swear everyone was taking ideas from each other. But before we take the last one out, jump on top of him in order to grab the other honeycomb. We now have two empty honeycombs out of six in order to increase our health. We can now take the last one out, and guess what it's going to spit out? I, I bet you would never guess. Oh my god, it's another Jiggy! Never would I have known they would have given me a main collectible when I just got two in the exact same area. Which, by the way, do you want another one? If I can get into the eyeball, there we go. <laughs> it's like they didn't even know where to put it. <laughs> So they just put it there. Also, I'm pretty sure. No? Wait, do I already have five? I already have five. Okay, cool. That's all of them so far. So that is actually perfect because if we check our totals right now, actually, this would be the perfect time to do this. Haven't been here too long, and yet we're only missing one jiggy, which is on top of that mountain, as we already know. We're also missing ten notes. Maybe they'll be inside that mountain. So let's head in here and see what Mumbo can do for us. Because we technically haven't met him yet, but this would be the first canonical time if you didn't save and quit as soon as you finished Sp Spiral Mountain and entered the witch's lair. Also, there were notes in here. Me and Mumbo, my shaman and all game, can help Banjo and Filthy Feather one. Watch it, hot boy! Mumbo's magic tokens, head bell witch. Find tokens and Mumbo help you. Ah. Banjo has plenty tokens. Stand on the skull and press X to see Mighty Mumbo Magic. Mumbo, 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 Mumbo. We will press the switch later because there is items that are hidden on the rafters. If I can get on this little post here. I actually keep flipping over it and not on it. There we go. Finally nailed that precise jump. The layout will be the same every world that Mumbo will be in, but whatever is in his hut is different, so always check to make sure that you're not missing anything. Go around the outer edge down here, make sure. Oh god, I left by accident, my B. Let's go back in. Auto saving is proccing. So that's the thing that actually annoys me. In the original you could make backups, but as far as I can tell on the file select screen, you can't make backups. You can't move to another file or copy. It's kind of annoying. So let's press X and see what he does, because we have enough tokens in order to unlock this transformation! Oh well, we're a tiny termite. Mumbo's magic free to change back. You come when ready. Termite bit small, but not bad for first spell. Mumbo practice needed. Right, so, 
Transformations are a thing in this game. In certain worlds, you'll be able to transform into a completely different form. Kazooie basically is non-existent. I don't understand, but... Banjo transforms, and you gain different abilities. But all of your previous abilities, other than running and basic jumping, are available. None of your other moves are. The Termite special ability? It can climb slopes that the Talon Trot cannot. So you already get an upgrade to the Talon Trot in the same world that you get the Talon Trot. But it's mostly just to show you that the Talon Trot can't do everything on slopes, and that you may need other methods. In this case, this is a method exclusive to this level. So you could probably grab everything else. But I believe that if you land in the water, you will just start uh, walking on the seabed, so it's fine. Yeah, why, why want those shots, Glimmy? You found all 100 notes on this world. Well done. So there we are. So that means you will not, never have to grab a note again in the N64 version. And of course, they're all collected in, the, in this version, so that's not a problem. We're actually pretty speedy as a termite. And yes, they will attack you. You have no methods of defense. So just avoid everything. Give me that cool back pack or else. Well, why is everyone such an asshole? <laughs> actually, to quote another rare character that was their own IP that came out to actually take the mick of games like this. Why is everyone so sensitive around here? That's precarious extra life. Give me that shit. These aren't climbable walls. At all, they are just walls, so we can't climb onto them, so let's just make our way around. A spiral mountain. Yeah, that's going to be a regular thing. And we can get the last uh, G. And also fanfare with no dance. This would naturally be the one that you would get last, because you would transform and all do it. And yes, I know I haven't hit that switch yet. We'll get that later. Because we would have to come to this side of the level anyway in order to get the ability to ground pound and then we'd have to go back down that way anyway or we would have cleared out this area up here and then got had to go down there to hit the pet switch but then we would have had to come back up again because there was a mumbo token down there that we needed to transform so no matter which way you do it you got to backtrack up and down but yeah we got everything in this world let's view more totals just to make sure except for that grunty switch which we do want to investigate we got 100 notes 10 jiggies and two honeycombs other than the moves that you can learn, which you would pretty much need to learn them all anyway, it's pretty much required. That's why it's going to be the standard for every world. It's just going to be a little bit more spaced out and more difficult. Because this was basically, as I said before, a training level with risk. So this is how you would transform back. You would just turn back up. Oh, okay. I was, I was pressing Y by accident. Press X to transform back into Bear and Bird. This is how you would normally transform, and you'd probably have to do it in mid-level in order to complete a level 100% oh. Oh, and if you ever do need a uh, refresher on what moves do, just go back to their, um, go back to the, any mole hill and the bottles will tell you again. There's a Jiggy on top of Mumbo's Mountain. Well, the Mumbo's Mountain entrance, shall I say. So, let me turn back into a Termite. <laughs> Alright, so we are a termite, and I'll just spread my legs as I fall. I'm pretty sure transformations cannot take full damage. Yes, there is full damage in this game. Be wary if you did fall off of top of Spiral Mountain. You probably would have realised if you didn't land in the water. That jiggy appeared outside of the world, even though we hit a switch inside the world. There is a Grunty switch in every world, and that will spawn a jiggy in Grunty's uh, lair. And the only way to get these is to pound the switches. The first one that we grabbed was just a tutorial. So that one doesn't require a switch. Because I guess, well, Spiral Mountain didn't have a switch, or I guess you could call it the switch itself. But yeah, we can actually run out around outside of a world in order to do stuff with our transformed ability in order to get these jiggies. Hey, where did you get those shorts? I want them. Tough, I'm leaving. Mumbo magic get weak, animal turn back, or ant magic go. So, if you, well, it came afterwards, but you remember in Donkey Kong 64, if we went too far with a crystal coconut power up, a super barrel, the effect would wear off. It's the same thing here, this was its first introduction. Magic all gone, must go back to bear and bird. Now, there's a reason why that they do this, it's so you don't break certain things later on in the, in the game, but at the same time, if you go too far, you're 
not going to be able to do much with your limited moveset anyway, so it's basically just a shortcut to transform you back anyway. Plus, termites can walk up slopes. Remember this slope that we couldn't climb? We can climb it now. It pretty much requires the talent trot. You can't stay transformed. And there's the first note door, which required half of the notes in the first world in order to open, as Bottles has told us. This is a note door sealed by Grunty with one of her powerful musical spells. Open it up then, Jam Jars! That's not my name, I told you this. And it's not that simple. To open it, you must collect the musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? Well, can you not read? The number on the door is the strength of the spell. The combined total of all your best note scores from the worlds must be at least this to break Grunty's magic. When you open a world door, baddies escape and roam once more. Hmm. The energy is a little low. I'll fill it up for you. Thank you. That doesn't really matter much right now. But yes, have you noticed that we've also got six lives? When we grab all 100 notes in a level, we gain an extra life. And because they would stay, they wouldn't stay collected in the N64 original, you can technically grind your lives by just playing Mumbo's Mountain over and over, which may help for later levels. But that's extra playtime needlessly wasted. And plus, if you game over, you're just going to start back like you start a new file anyway, but, you know, you don't want to die anyway, you'd lose all your notes, so just don't die. Lives are kind of pointless, it just makes an unnecessary challenge annoying. But, we can open this door. And with that, guys, we move further onwards into Grunty's Lair in the next episode. See you guys then. Oh, my God.